What's up guys? So, this is gonna be the first workout of 2018. It is January 1st. No, it's January 2nd. And I am stalling in the car because it's freaking cold outside. It is currently cold as balls. It's 49 degrees outside. It feels like it's like negative 30 outside right now and I'm freezing. I'm, I'm pretty tired. It's about 9. No, it's 10. <laughs> I don't want to get out, but it's been a hot minute since I got a really good workout in, so I'm pretty excited. So I'm going to walk you through a warm-up glute activation. I started online training and I put together a workout and I'm actually gonna be putting myself through that whole workout today. So you guys will get first view of what that workout consists of. And I'm pretty excited because I feel like I'm gonna murder my glutes and my legs today. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next clip. Bye. Before I hit the weights, I went ahead and did a warm up for about seven minutes on the Stairmaster just to warm up my legs. You don't necessarily have to warm up on here if you would not like to. You can go ahead and do anything from the elliptical or the treadmill. For our first glute activation exercise, we're going to start off by doing the standing hip abductors. Place the resistant band around your ankle area and go ahead and push up as far as possible. As soon as you push up, don't forget to really contract your glute muscle at the top of this movement. Angling my body at this position allows for a better glute isolation and for a better burn. Going back to our first glute activation exercise, we're going to be doing the standing hip abductors. The only difference now is you're going to be having the resistant band around your thigh and your quad area. And going back to our second glute activation exercise, the same as the one before, we're going to be putting the band around our quad and thigh area and going into a kickback motion. Again, having my body in this angle allows for a better glute isolation. Now, time to hit the weights. Starting off with the leg press. On glute isolation days, I like having my foot placement a little bit higher than usual. As you can see, my stance is a little bit wider than shoulder width distance. Go ahead and bring the weights in as you're pushing out. Remember not to lock your knees. If you lock your knees, you are very prone to injury. Another tip I have when you're isolating your glutes, be sure that when you are pushing up, that you are really focusing on pushing up with your heels. That really helps isolate your glute muscles as well. Up next are goblet squats. Squats. Your foot positioning is going to be a lot wider than shoulder width distance, pointing your feet outwards as you are coming down into a squat. Remember to push off with your heels and don't forget to squeeze your glute at the top of this movement. And up next, we're going to be doing alternating lunges. You're going to go ahead and start off by having your feet at shoulder width distance, stepping out in front of you with your left foot, going into a lunge position coming back to shoulder width distance and starting off with your next foot. Remember to push off with your heels to really focus on your glutes. Would a glute isolation day really be a glute isolation day without any hip thrusts? For those of you who don't know, hip thrusts have to be one of my favorite booty builders. For the positioning of your feet, go ahead and position your feet wider than hip distance, keeping your feet forward, going into a thrust motion at the top of the thrust, Hold and squeeze for two seconds. Really squeezing at the top of this motion allows for your glutes to be really contracted. And again, don't forget to push up with your heels. Pushing up with your heels is ideal when hitting leg or when you're really wanting to isolate your glutes. Say goodbye, no